Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray, amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Greetings, I'm Jeff Ross. I'm one of the associate pastors here at Roswell United Methodist Church. And uh, we welcome you to this service, uh, the very first Sunday of the year, 2023. Uh, let us pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for the opportunity to be uh, in this place. Thank you for folks that are, uh, have tuned in. And uh, as we begin this new year together, we pray your blessing and your guidance. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Just a quick word of instruction or opportunity. Uh, towards the end of the service, I'm going to offer you an opportunity to write uh, uh, down a gift that you want to give to God. The title of my sermon is One More Gift to Give. Uh, and so uh, I've got some wrapping paper cut in uh, little squares. You may have uh, uh, disposed of all your wrapping paper, but a, just a piece of paper would work well too. So if you have a pen, a piece of paper handy, uh, you may want to... Uh, uh, have that towards the end of the sermon uh, uh, as, I, as I give you some instruction about that. So uh, just a little, a little forewarning. So today is the first Sunday of the year. Uh, it's uh, a whole new year ahead of us, 2023. And so I want us to look at the uh, book of Isaiah, chapter 63, verses 7 through 9. And it says there in Isaiah, I will tell of the kindness of the Lord, the deeds for which he is to be praised, according to all the Lord has done for us. Yes, the many good things he has done for Israel, according to his compassion and many kindnesses. He said, surely they are my people and children who will be true to me. And so he became their savior. In all their distress, he was also distressed, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. May God add his blessing to our hearing and understanding of his word. So, wow, the holiday season. Uh, it's a lot isn't it? We celebrated Christmas, we exchanged gifts, <laughs> and then maybe a couple of days later we returned gifts and got the right size. Uh, we thawed out from the big freeze over Christmas. We celebrated maybe Christmas Eve communion and candlelight services. We, we maybe over the week watched a good movie or binged some show on Netflix. Uh, we probably ate too much. Maybe we stayed up a little late last night to ring in the new year. So hopefully now you have a couple of days uh, to sort of gather yourself before you have to go back to whatever you were doing before the holidays, uh, work or school or whatever it was that you were doing. But also, 
important for today, hopefully, you've been able to take a little bit of time over the last month to sort of ponder uh, and examine uh, 2022 and look a little bit ahead to 2023. Wow, a new year. What, what in the world will that bring? Some things uh, that are probably expected will happen. Some things we can count on that are not expected will happen. So I don't know in our scripture passage uh, today if this was Isaiah's sort of look into a new year, uh, if it was just a pondering at some point uh, during the year. Um, but the words that he uses, the thoughts that he shares, uh, might be a good guide for us as we enter into 2023. Because I love the way that Isaiah starts. He starts this uh, passage, he shares these, thing, these things with us uh, with a smile and with thankfulness in his heart. He says, I will recount the kindnesses of the Lord according to all that God has granted us. He's looking forward to what it is that God might be doing. He says, God's goodness has been upon our house. God has been merciful, God has been loving, God has saved, and God has redeemed. <laughs> That's a great way to start a new year. That's a great outlook. That's a, a great uh, way to frame your mind and your heart as you're beginning something new. Because too often, the opposite happens, right? Too often we, we approach something new uh, in a different light. Instead of being thankful for the blessings we have, we can only focus on all those things we don't have. We are looking back over our shoulder at what we missed out on and angrily looking around for someone to put the blame on uh, because it surely couldn't have been something that we did. Instead of the list that Isaiah makes, we make a different list that focuses on fear or prejudice or self-absorption or arrogance or angerness or bitterness or pride. And so, you know, as we, we juggle these two uh, ways of, of thinking or, or entering a new year, we, we might be tempted to say, well, I'm sure that uh, uh, Isaiah had had a great year, that everything had gone well, that all thing is good, and, and no wonder he's excited about uh, the things to come because everything's just fallen into place. Well, if you read the 66 chapters of Isaiah, you know that that's just not true. Uh, to say our time is chaotic uh, might be true, but if our time is chaotic, then you might multiply that uh, for Isaiah's time. The whole way of life, the whole nation, the whole countryside has uh, been in upheaval. Uh, it's a chaotic place and a chaotic time. So Isaiah's time uh, didn't, uh, didn't give the words to Isaiah that he uses. The words that Isaiah uses are a choice that even in difficult places and difficult times and looking out into an unknown future, we still have a choice, don't we, about how we will approach it and what our demeanor and our mindset uh, will be. Because Isaiah's letter uh, chronicles joys and sorrows, pleasure, and pain, hope and despair, life and death, all of the things that all of us are embattled with and, and struggling with and anxious over. So as we turn our focus and attention into 2023, what's going to be your posture? How are you going to approach 2023? Where will your head and your heart be as you move into this place? 
So standing at the threshold of this new year, are you going to enter it the way that Isaiah speaks about? Recounting the kindnesses of God. Looking at the goodness that God has bestowed onto our house. That God has been merciful. That God has been loving. That God has saved us. That God does redeem us. Is, is that a starting point for how we might begin this year? Well, Sometimes unexpected things happen, and sometimes life takes a twist. I came across a story this week about a hippopotamus and a tortoise. Uh, it seems that the hippopotamus had been orphaned uh, in a tsunami, and it was just a baby, and it lost its family, and hippos, according to the article, I have no uh, history with that, but according to the article, are very social, and so the, the baby hippo was longing for a friend, uh, and the most unlikely of friends happened along. It's a hundred-year-old tortoise named Maisie. And uh, you can see the pictures. They became inseparable friends. What are the odds that anyone would have predicted that? So I want to suggest that maybe as we head into 2023, one of the keys to unlocking the very best of 2023 might be to continue uh, in a journey of the unexpected, to do something to start the year that's maybe sort of counterintuitive. At the altar this uh, morning in the, the sanctuary, I'm going to have uh, pieces of wrapping paper, uh, which I uh, told you about a few minutes ago. And I want to, in just a minute, invite you to write on to the wrapping paper one more gift as we bring this holiday season to conclusion. I'd, I'd like you to take that wrapping paper or that piece of paper and think about a gift that you might offer uh, to God. And I'd like you to consider something that may be counterintuitive in terms of a gift. If you were going to offer God a gift and you were going to write that gift on this piece of paper, uh, what might that be? I want you to think a little bit before you write that down. Uh, something that, again, might be sort of counterintuitive, might not be what you would want as a gift or what you would expect as a gift or what you would even consider a good gift. What I'd like you to consider is something in your life that, that needs to go. Uh, something that's going to hinder you if you carry it with you into 2023. Something that maybe has already been a hindrance in your life. It might be fear. It might be prejudice. It might be self-absorption. It might be arrogance. It might be anger. It might be bitterness. It might be pride. It might be something else that, that God, the Holy Spirit, has placed on your mind uh, to write down on this piece of paper. And here's the crazy thing, that God actually wants that gift. <laughs> you might not think of it as a gift. You might think of it as a burden, something to unload. Uh, but I'd like you to think in terms this morning of it being a gift that you offer to God, something that you say, here, God, you take this. And the crazy thing is God wants it. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that crazy? God, but God does. God loves this kind of present. God wants to take the burdens from us so that we might have life in all of its abundance. The scripture says, come to me all who are weary and heavy laden. And what does God promise? And I will give you rest. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sin, 
God is faithful and just and will forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. It's, it's a crazy thing that God wants to take this stuff that holds us back, that holds us down, that's always making us look back over our soldier so, shoulder uh, for somebody to blame, that bitterness, that rage, that anger that builds up in our life and destroys everything around us. God wants that stuff. <laughs> Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. For that to happen, we have to let go of certain things. And so on this first day of 2023, what's the thing that you need to let go of if 2023 is going to be better than 2022. What's eating at you? What, what are you hanging on to that you know you don't need or want to hang on to, but you just can't seem to find a way to let it go? I'm going to invite you to, to write that on a, on a piece of paper, wrapping paper. Here in the sanctuary, we're going to place that at the altar and pray over it at home, I'd, I'd simply like you to put that somewhere uh, that indicates that you're lifting it up. Maybe the next time you're at church, bring it to the altar and place it here. The second thing that, that I'm going to ask you to do is to leave it here. Too often when we, we do something like this, we, we have a moment of inspiration, but then as we, we start to leave or walk away, we, we reach back and we grab that thing and we put it back in our pocket. We want to let it go, but, but we don't. We seem to enjoy or, or seem to get something from the turmoil that it brings in our life. This year is a great time to, to take a new step. This year is a great time to take the posture of Isaiah, to focus not on the things that haven't gone our way. And believe me, in Isaiah's day, there was a lot of things, but instead to focus on the goodness of God, God's blessings on your house, uh, God's grace and mercy in your life, the fact that God has saved you and that God redeems you. If we were to start 2023 and then walk the days of this calendar year with that mindset, we'd experience a freshness of faith. We'd experience the forgiveness and the healing that God offers. <laughs> the crazy thing is that God, God really wants this gift. God would consider it a gift. And you would find a blessing. Let us pray. God, I thank you for this day. A whole new year is ahead of us. Help us, God, as we enter this new year, not to bring and drag and haul the baggage of the year before and the year before and the year before that with us into this new year. Let us start in a new place, a place of thankfulness, a place of joy, a place of, of kindness, a place of redemption and of salvation. And let us walk with you trusting, God, that you actually will and do take these burdens from us so we can live the life that you've intended for us. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. 
Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that He made us in His image, and what the Bible tells us is that His image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, He made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to Him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir, an organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.